everyone how are you doing tonight just one second just be sure hello 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 everyone um thank you so much for everyone who is going to join this live and thank you so much for everyone who is going to join afterwards First and foremost, if you were here yesterday evening, because I did send out that I was going to come out live yesterday evening, unfortunately, I was unable to do so. The very first thing is that um, all of the notes that I was gathering to get the live done was not finished. And I'm still not finished with the notes um so if you are watching this discussion probably tuesday at the latest the earliest tomorrow but more than likely i'm guessing tuesday at the latest wednesday you are going to receive a video um, on the youtube channel over at dl consulting firm where we are going to do things um you know, a little bit more polished and professional. But I really felt like it was so important to come on live when Africa is going through such an humongous shift over what is going on. Um, for those of us who are here in Haiti, I really don't believe, hi, thank you so much for joining. For those of us who are um, here in Haiti, or even for those of us who may be, you know, in the Americas, um, if you're not really in politics, um, they are not sharing this news. And it's just the tactics. They are not sharing at all what is going on in the Niger, what has been going on over in Burkina Faso, and what is also going on over in the Mali. So I was aware of what went down over in the Burkina Faso. However, I'm not so sure why I wasn't so focused. I think the um, the events that were going on here in Haiti were so palpable that I really wasn't focused over there. So for tonight, I am going to touch on the notes. I am probably going to do this live a little bit of a bilingual. I am definitely going to tackle a little bit of my French just because I do have a growing audience over in, um, you know, I have a growing audience in Cameroon. I also have a, a growing audience a little bit in the, um, you know, countries where they speak French. And I actually do want to uh, grow my audience a lot more um, towards my African um countries. Well, um, first and foremost, I just want to send a huge, a huge congratulations, salutations to the people over at the Burkina Faso and the Mali, as well as in the Niger. All of these three countries are waking up and some of their military personals have decided that enough was enough. They wanted their countries to take charge of their own resources and do business the way that it's supposed to be done. Hmm. Interesting world that we have on um, now. Um, Guys, I have been working nonstop between what's going on here in Haiti and finding out what's going on over in Africa and teasing my web in trying to really see this global shift. I am running on almost no sleep, but I am so excited for the times of today because I can finally smell, smell a shift. Although I can see why certain things are happening for us here in the country of Haiti, 
and why a lot of our news anchors have recently started to die. Actually, a lot of them died major um, around 2022. There was a mass shooting from um, a lot of the young news anchors here in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Um, you have to remember that um, for those of you who are only um, maybe in the younger generation, um, it may not be very important or it may not be, um, you may not understand the power of a microphone. Um, for a journalist, the microphone is everything because what you can do with your microphone is you have the gift to empower another person. With your microphone, you have the gift to empower an entire nation. With your microphone, you have the gift to inform your own people about what's really going on. Because a lot of times, you know, for example, I know we're going all over the place with this, um, but I really have so much before we go into um, dive into um, the notes, I actually really for tonight, I wanted to talk about the importance of um, communication and the importance for us, especially us here in the country of Haiti, to understand what's going on in Africa. And I've always said so. I've always, always, always said that IT was too alienated in countries in Africa, right? Because one thing that you have to remember about the Haitian history is that we were colonized by the French. Our Dominican um, partners were colonized by the Spaniards. A lot of the countries in the Caribbean were colonized mostly by British, Britain, right? So the very few countries who were also colonized by the French or La Martinique, La Guadeloupe, um, La Martinique, La Guadeloupe, or is there another country? But even these countries, they're not really, um, IT is very much so extremely alienated from the countries in the Caribbean. And it's, on, it's all because of the fact that IT took on its um, independence from France. So they kept us at bay. And you're not really going to understand what I'm saying to you unless you've actually worked within the Caribbean or unless you've not even visited, lived in another country in the Caribbean. But I'm going to say mainly unless you've worked with them. Because in the last 10 years, I have worked a lot within other entities and other organizations in the Caribbean, even when I was my last day in the United States, there's always a tendency to get Haiti out of, you know, membership in the Caribbean. It's always has been like that. And I feel like it's been like so because the people who are supposedly in charge, you know, so the quote unquote leaders in the Caribbean, they have been coach as far as that Haitian people. They have been literally brainwashed as far as like us here in Haiti. So because we are in the Caribbean, they, they don't have a choice but to um, make sure that we get a part in whatever they have going on. But it's not really truthful. I'm going to be very honest with you. It's really not truthful. And myself, I had to take on the initiative to cut myself out from all of the association that I was a part of because through the youth agency that I direct, because when Haiti went in through its upheaval last year, especially around that time, I, Haiti went into some major upheaval, you know, major kidnapping, left and right, not one of the so-called partners that I had over in the Caribbean actually wrote to me to inquire about my well-being, if I needed some support, how could they assist me, if there was anything on their end that they could do given what is going on here in Haiti. 
excuse me, not one of them. And when we closed down 2022, I really sat with myself and I understood that if I was going to decide to remain in the country of Haiti, and if I was going to decide to continue with this work that I'm doing here for my country, then I needed to understand that I really was alone. No one was going to save me, especially here in the Caribbean and the United States. Like no one was going to offer an olive branch to me based on what is going on in Haiti, especially in the work and in the field that I'm doing. Just to say that, I cut out all of my association. I literally started 2023 fresh. I said to myself, my ancestors, my ancestors fought. And I've, I'm not going to um, turn this into something else, but you know, I had a lot of burst of anger in 2023 because IT entered 2023 again in death. So I had a lot of bursts of anger um, where I wrote out to some entities and I said, right here in the Caribbean, people who were on um, sites such as LinkedIn and not once they would um, promote about what's going on, you know, in Jamaica, they would promote about what's going on over in Turks and Caicos. Meanwhile, Haiti was the leading news as far as like everything that we were going. And some of these sites not once mentioned Haiti, not once post what was going on, not once. And they are all in the Caribbean all in the Caribbean. And I had to write to a few of them and ask them when IET took on the initiative to take on its liberty, it did so for every black nation in the world. So today we have the American people who have us in a chokehold. They have their feet on our neck and we can't even breathe. And none of you have the courage to talk about what's going on in Haiti. So I literally had to have a sit down with myself. And I said to myself, well, your ancestor did it before. So why can't you muster on that same strength and understand that you too could do it as well? And you could push through. You don't need any partnership from organization, association, individuals who are not going to stand with you when you are in hell, because this is the status of Haiti since actually 2018, but of course it's spiraled down since 2021. This to say that we here, not only in Haiti, but as Haitian, as people of the land of Haiti, we have got to make a drastic change and cut our ties with individuals, organizations, associations, and any government where their support is not honest. It's time that we say no. Today, today, I am overwhelmed with joy. I am overwhelmed with confidence. I am overwhelmed with pride when I see the, what's going on in the Mali and Burkina Faso and now in the Niger. This is a wake-up call for all of us and the world to understand that this is a new dawn. And I've told you that 2024 was going to be a new dawn. I've said so. And I'm happy. I'm happy because I am doing this work and IET is at its darkest hours and I'm still pushing through. But I will be honest and say that there are times where I ask myself, are you not alone in this fight? Are you not alone in what you want for your country? Are you not alone in the vision 
that you see for your country. There are times, ladies and gentlemen, where I'm doing this work and I question if I'm actually going to see this new dawn for Haiti. So to see my comrades and my brothers over in these countries take on this lead, I salute them and I send all of our strength to those of you who need it. May the ancestors carry you out. May they protect you. May they empower you. May they give you the strength to fight for your land because today it is a new dawn. It is a shift and it is time that we, children of our land, we take control and we say no to colonization, to imperialization, to all of those who are crippling us, right? So we are not going to turn this into something else because you guys know that I could really do so. But it was really important for me to come and to tell you about um, the revolution that is going on in Africa because I highly doubt that the United States, I mean, I don't see one, I don't really watch the news, but I don't think that those of you who are non-African, who are Americans, and it's so funny because as I was paying attention to the news over the weekend, I spent all week, right, um, listening to a lot of these excellent channel. There is um, this lady over in, I believe she is from Cameroon. Her name is Natalie Yem, right? You can watch her. She diffuses her news in French. And I also found uh, um, another gentleman, Zach Mwekasa. Zach Mwekasa, I have been completely glued to his YouTube channel. So if you really want to um, understand in greater details about, I, I'm going to read some of these notes for you as well. And I will have a video over the week for you as well for, for us to understand, because I do see that my audience is a lot more growing toward the United States. And I highly doubt that the majority of you are aware of what's going on over there, over in the Burkina Faso, over in the Mali, over in now the Niger, with all these coup d'etat. These guys have outstayed their government and said, get out. You are not doing the job that the people want you to do. You are not empowering your nation. You are working hand in hand with colonization. You are working hand in hand to cripple your country. We have had enough. Get out of our country. And now, over in the Burkina Faso, we have the amazing, amazing, whew, mes amis, Monsieur Ibrahim Traoué, over at the Burkina Faso, who said, we can do business as well. Turn around to Russia and say, let's do business. Mes amis, what are these people doing in Haiti? What are they doing in Haiti? I cannot wait. I know that 2024, it's going to be another wave of them to die. I'm just waiting for them to die. And then we're going to start to work for our country. So, because we're not going to be here all night, let's read a little bit from the notes because I really want my audience to have a sense of um, the coup d'etat, um, what they mean and um, why these coup d'etat are there um, so that you understand. And as I'm, I, as I'm doing this for you, you guys have also to go back and do your own research. You now, after I'm done doing this, you go over it on the channel that I had over at Daisy Love 83, that YouTube channel. You go back to some of the videos, especially the 2019 playlist, and you listen to some of these videos that I have there with you. And the video that I have for the consultation, the DL Consulting um, channel, this is all forward thinking that is going on, that is going to happen here in Haiti. But guess what? Remember what I've said to you. It's all geopolitics. What's going on in Haiti right now is very strategic. It's extremely strategic. Because one of the things that the United States would be damned is for China to get a foothold in the Caribbean, which could have happened 
and would have still happened if the president, past president of Haiti, may he rest in power, had played his card, cards right. If he had understood the depth of the game that he was playing, although everything was against him. But um, if China has a foothold through Haiti and the Caribbean, it's a game changer. So now if you go back to the videos that I've put out for you over on my channel, DL Consulting Firm, you go back to the rec reconstruction phase of Haiti. This is all forward thinking and it's going to happen. Mark my words. It's going to happen. These guys, it's, it's over for them. It's over for them. So let's go and let's let let me read for you a little bit about um, some of these um, events, right? So what we have now, we had that we have a coup d'état. Now, for those of you who do not know what is a coup d'état, it's when you get a um, usually it's, it's made by military personals who just overthrow a government, right? So let's just say that Haiti had major coup d'état. Haiti had a coup d'état in. <clears throat> 1991 it had another coup d'etat in 2004 and this is all because you know the united states didn't really like the president who was democratically elected here in haiti which was president i said i covered that over on my youtube channel days of love 83 so that's what that's what is a, a coup d'etat it's a coup you know it's kind of like a government is in power and sometimes you have other personals and but still military and they're like okay we're just going to march and we're going to take on these guys cannot do it and they need to get out and usually sometimes these presidents are ousted, ousted out of the country you know they get in exile and um these three countries that we're going to talk about, they gave their own government the coup d'etat. They organized it. So these are countries where these military personnel or their interest is their country. For Haiti, it has always been the United States that gave President coup d'etat when they're just not happy with the way things are turning out. When you're too popular, when you are not really into what they have going on, when they don't really like you, when you have a more tendency to become a little bit more socialist, when you look toward you know countries such as Russia, when you are really a little bit of a communist person, they're like, ah, that's not our guy. And usually for Haiti... It's easy for the United States to um, give coup d'etat to the Haitian army because as I've covered to you before, the army here in Haiti, it's like, we're going to go deep into it, but everything that we have here in this country in Haiti is the United States who gives us that. So it's easy for them because everyone is working for them directly or indirectly even when we we do you know economics so the fight that these guys in africa are having and they are really um it, it might just be easier for them to do this fight for us here in haiti it's going to be a very challenging task why because the majority of our population or over in the United States of America. And I know that so many, there are Haitian people who look at the United States like, you know, it's a great country. And I'm not going to say that I don't understand where they're coming from, especially if these people feel like IT has never given them anything. Even when you think about even my own generation, or let's say if I had children, if I had children who were maybe, you know, young adults, you know, teens, a lot of these kids are born in the United States or are living in the United States. So the fight that IT will have to win will not be the same way as that or these um, countries over in Africa that are banishing friends, you know, that are telling friends, we do not want you here anymore. You are not doing good business with us. You are stealing our resources and we do not want you here. So hopefully I'm going to be done and then we can do a little bit of comparison. But I just wanted you to understand um, just a little bit about what I'm talking about and um, the position of Haiti here. All right. So the first coup d'etat that we had, we had it in the Mali, right? So all of most of these countries are in um, West Africa. Okay. 
So it happened on August 18, 2020, and it happened by Colonel Asimi Gaita. And the uh, Colonel Major is Mael Wage, and they overthrew their puppet president, Mr. Obra eh, Ibrahim Keita, who was in power since 2013. So this coup d'etat happened in 2020. And that's already three years. Excuse me, three years since it happened. I was extremely unaware of that. Now, hmm, over in Burkina Faso, on January 1st, 2022, we have a first coup d'etat that the Burkina Bay, that's how they call them, um, did. What was the cause of this? Failure of the government to contain the Hidayish insurgency in Burkina Faso, organized by a group of military officers. They overthrew the president, Walk Mark Christian Cabore, the military installed at its head, Movement Patriotique pour la Sauvegarde et la Restauration, avec at its head, Paul Henri Sendagaro na Namiba and its leadership, right? So that was on January 1st, 2022, the Burkina Bay, they decided that, okay, the president, he's not doing his job. We are going to overthrow him. So they did. As soon as they overthrew him, they made a movement. The movement, it's like a patriotic movement. And what they did, they elected the, um, you know, a colonel. His name is Paul Henri Sendagao Damiba. And they said, okay, you are going to become the interim president. He was the interim president on February 20th, 2022. He was supposed to be the interim president for a period of three years. But guess what? That same year, it appears to be that this interim president was yet again not working on behalf of the people. Because this is what you need to understand about this game of politics. A lot of times, People are out for themselves. So when you have a coup d'etat, because I remember clearly like in 1991, we had two coup d'etat, right? Here in Haiti. The first, it, it's two coup d'etat that happened in a, in a, in a, it's like the, they, they overlaps each other. That, that's what took place in 1991 here in Haiti. Um, who was the president of prison? President Alexis was there. So there was this guy, his name was Roger Lafontaine. So Roger Lafontaine actually is the guy who really did the coup d'etat of, um, I think it was um, October 7th, 1991. But as he was doing the coup d'etat, there was the other guys who was in the army, who was Jenny Gatsidras and all of these guys. They used his coup d'etat to give another coup d'etat. Do you understand? So they double up the coup d'etat of Roger Lafontaine. They actually murdered him and then they took power and Alcide left the country. With of, um, there was also uh, Madame Irta Pascal Duyo, who was the president before Alcide, who also left Haiti around that time. So it's very, when you are going to give, you know, when the army is going to give a coup d'etat, and you're dealing, whenever you're dealing with groups, especially right now, it is so important, guys, that you understand the times of today. Very, very crucial because it's fascinating. You know, I just still cannot believe that I'm living, you know, this new wave of the world that is changing right before our eyes. When you have groups, two, three people, four or five people, the army, you know, you know, you never know what one person is thinking. So there needs to always be, in my opinion, a sense of maybe, let's say that there's a group of, we're just going to say five people. There needs to always be at least two or even one person in this group who, if things do not go according, so let's say that we are in a group, but if we decide that we're going to do X, but if we do X 
and I'm not abiding by what X is. The other guys have got to put me back in my place. There needs to be that because this is exactly what happened at the Burkina Faso. These guys, they overthrew their president, right? They gave a coup d'etat on January 1st. So all of them agreed that, okay, the president is really not working. The president is really not doing what he says that he was supposed to do. He's bullshitting. We have enough of him. Like, no, we're not doing that. So they did the first coup d'etat. That was January 1st, 2022. When they did the first coup d'etat in January 1st, 2022, then guess what? After that, the same guy that they elected as interim president, guess what? They realized that he, he too was bullshit. They realized that, oh, hold up. He is really not doing what we wanted him to do. Because the situation over in these countries is that they have a group of terrorists. They call them the, the Hidaish. That is going around and killing their people killing their militaries, killing their personals. And the president of their countries at the time who was elected since 2013, he was not doing anything. He was sitting there not doing much, you know, just like puppet governments, not doing much, trying to do diplomatic things. Meanwhile, civilians are dying, military personals are dying, the police is dying, and they don't, know, they don't want to really touch on the issues. They just are leaving this population for themselves, right? So when they gave that first good that, and this guy came, he became the, he, he should have been the interim president for three years. The army people quickly realized that he was actually not doing, so they had a plan and here now they elected this guy and this guy is not doing shit. He's not doing anything according to what they had. He's not working for these people on behalf of the... He's just not doing anything. It feels and it looks like he's actually working for himself. So a group... Let me read for you the notes. So now on September 30th, 2022, there was a second coup d'etat organized by the Junta Military Special Force Cobra, at its leadership, Captain Ibrahim Traoré. The reason, failure of the interim government to uphold their capacity at defending the population of Burkina Bay as well as the interests of their country. The interim president, Paul Henri Damiba, resigns on October 2nd, 2022. On October 14, 2022, Captain Ibrahim Traoré gets elected as the interim president of Burkina Faso. So, as I said to you, this guy gets elected interim president. He's not doing shit. He's not working on behalf of the people. He's not working on behalf of the interests of the country. So there's a group of military called the, uh, called the Cobra over there. And they said, oh, no, 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 no. We, this is not the agreement that we had. You guys are, you are not doing your job. And they march on him. Okay, so they overthrew him. And they said, you need to get out. And Captain Ibrahim Traoré quickly became, the people were like, we want you there. We want you as our interim president. Now, mind you, this guy is only 35 years old. We salute over here in Haiti, okay? We salute big time over here in IT. So, the interesting thing about this young man is that as soon as the people of his country elected him, he said, uh-uh, you know what? We've done business in the past with France. We've done business in the past with the United States. It never bolted well for us. We are going to do business with Russia. So they invited him recently at a big meeting that Russia had with other African countries, and he was there. 
I could not believe my eyes when I saw this. I said, Lord, 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 when am I going to be able to flip the table for my own country? And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So this is what took place over in Burkina Faso. So we are at two years ago or last year's 2022. My dear ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Seigneur. Merci. Merci. On July 26, 2023, Niger gave its first coup d'etat, not Nigeria, because I know some of you might just confuse these countries. We are over in West Africa. We're talking about the Niger just about a month ago, right? So let's read the note. On July 26, 2023, there was a coup d'etat over in the Niger organized by a military junta by the CNSP, which is the Conseil National pour la Sauvegarde de la Patrie, which is basically um, a council for the um, country, right? They take on the office of um, Radio Diffusion Television of Niger and announce the destitution of the current government presiding by Monsieur Mohamed Bazoum. On July 28, 2023, General Abdurrahman Chiani is proclaimed president of the Council National for the Country, Conseil National pour la Sauvegarde. Oops, are we still here? Yes, sorry. I think that my, my light switch. Conseil National um, pour... La sauvegarde de la patrie. So they, they named this guy at the head of, um, excuse me, guys, it's very, very hard for me. They named this guy at, at the head of um, the country. Now, reason for them to overthrow their government is the same shit. Bunch of um, puppet people that are Mr. Bazoum, Zeobal, not doing anything. Failure of the government to support the well being of its citizen failure of the government to uphold the interests of the country in favor of its citizen, failure of the government to provide adequate security to its people and army personnel, lastly, failure of the government to collaborate and show their support to the interim government of the people over in the Mali and the Burkina Faso. So, what you need to understand is that it's a wake up, right? These guys, Mali started, you know, the Mali started. They were like, oh, you know, it's not working for us. They did their first coup d'etat. They said, oh no, it's just not gonna work for us. Mali started over in 2020. When you do one thing, it's a movement. That's the danger that France is looking at it like, ah, ah. Monsieur Macron, comment allez-vous? <laughs> Ça va? Mm -hmm. They're probably looking at it like, oh no, we cannot have this. So Mali started, and then last year you have these guys over in the Burkina Faso. So the Niger is looking at it like their president, Monsieur Mo Mohamed Bazoum, is that is his name? Yes. He's not doing much. He is working in connivance with... Um, the other destitute Monsieur Macron over there in France, they are working hand in hand. Their peop the people over in the Niger are suffering. The people in the Niger do not have access to electricity. Just same shit as Haiti. Same shit. Same, same, same freaking shit. Same freaking shit. So the army said, ah, uh -uh. enough is enough. We have had enough of you, Monsieur Bazoum they decided to give him a coup d'etat, which happened about a month ago. So this is the recent one, and France is going 
Basiska. You understand that it is the third African country to wake up because these are not necessarily coup d'etat by military personals who are, you know, um, wanting to enrich themselves by military personnel who are not aware of the resources of their own countries. You have a new dawn. You have new errors, just like those of you, especially those, those of you who are from IET and who live in the United States. You too are educated. You too have access to information. So why are you still selling yourself out in this country? Why are you still over there when IET is going through the madness that is going on? That's the problem that we are having here in IET. This is why I say that Yes, it's very important for me to come and to talk about this issue. However, the way that the people over in these countries are going to tackle their issues is going to be so much more challenging for those of us who want to tackle these issues because a lot of the majority of you guys are living in the United States and it's all strategic. The United States did this thing. It's very strategic. So you do have a lot of the people that are over there, like a lot of the Haitian people, you guys have mixed feelings. Yes, you consider yourself Haitian, but you consider yourself a lot more American, which should have never been, which should have never been. So the, 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 the fight for us in IET is going to be different. It's still the same fight in the same movement. But it's just going to be very different. I can see it. It's just going to be like extremely different. So anyways, so when this happened, you can imagine how France is feeling. Not necessarily because they really give a damn about these countries or they, they I mean, they, these people, they really don't care about these people. But what do they care about? What have, what have we been discussing lately, ladies and gentlemen? What have we been discussing lately? We've been discussing about natural resources. And I've explained to you what's going on in the world. It's a power strategic move. I've said to you what's going on in Haiti. It's all strategic by the United States government to keep Haiti like that because they need the resources of Haiti, the, the oils, the uranium, lithium, manganese. We'll talk about that if you're not um, on my YouTube channel, DL Consulting Firm, please, I invite you to go over there. So for the United States, IT is extremely important. They need this land so that they can continue to mine, so that they can continue to steal the resources of, of IT, so enrich themselves. And it's easy for them to do so because you have here in Haiti a population that is very dormant, very, very, very dormant. I've talked about this either um, as a social approach, at a political approach, at an individual approach, the Haitian people are very dormant. It's kind of like they accept everything. I've touched to you about little scenarios that to me was just unbelievable that happened here in the country of Haiti, such as going to a grocery store and people having change to give back to you, but they're not giving it to you. They're giving you candy. I've also touched on the fact that here in Haiti, there's not really a lot of businesses, like big businesses, but the very few supposedly businesses that we have that run the commerce, we touch on that. They are not run by the Haitian people. The Haitian people do not have access in the Haitian people are prohibited to open certain businesses in their country. Can you believe this shit? So for me, when I looked at this, I just could never understand the situation here in Haiti. Absolutely never. But it felt like every time I would voice my disconcern, people in Haiti always looked at it like, I mean, it's always been like this. It's nobody tried to say, oh no, it shouldn't be like this. And unfortunately, this is what the president of Haiti was trying to do at the end. He was 
fighting and he was putting out this information for the population to finally understand, hey, this is really what's going on with these guys here in Haiti that control commerce. They control economy. Whenever you have a country and they don't control their resources, they don't control their commerce, how I'm doing business with you, then you are not in power. You don't care who is the president of this country. You are absolutely not in power if you do not have power over commerce in your country. Commerce is business. It's what our ancestor did, Flibustier Boucanier, back in the days. I have fish, you have plantains, I'm giving you fish, you're giving me plantain. We still do that. It's exchange. And whenever you cannot do in any exchange, what are you going to eat? What, what are you going to do business with? I've expressed this bullshit to you. Excuse the French. I've expressed to you that you have the neighboring country, the Dominican Republic. They know that you, not only is it that the Haitian people do not have access to their own commerce, but it's a country that has not been producing anything. So the, the main thing that you need, that you should have had to support you is your agriculture. We touch on that. We touch on the fact that IT is not doing any agriculture. IT, uh, IT is not doing any aquaculture, culture, anything that Haiti should be doing for its citizens to be able to eat. They are not doing that. So you don't have any type of commerce in this country. So you can't even start, begin to be doing business but we still have our natural resources. Now, how many people really in this country outside, probably of people who are in governmental position, how many people truly know of the natural resources of Haiti and what good they are? How many people understand what lithium is for? How many people understand what manganese is for? I'll be very honest with you because I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I knew this and I knew that. I always knew that IT had natural access to natural resources. I knew that IT has access to gold. I knew that IT had access to uranium, but I didn't know that IT had access to manganese. I didn't know that IT has access to copper. And this is why I love the work that I'm doing now because I am learning so much through this work that I am doing. So now I understand why IET plays such a key in the new in the global world. So it's the same thing with these countries over in Africa, because the very interesting thing that you need to realize that almost everyone has been talking about is the fact that when you're looking at countries such as the Niger, right? It's a country that is giving to France so much electricity. I've never been to France. I've never been to Paris, but I know that Paris is gorgeous. 24 hour electricity. All of these resources are from Africa. But the African people, they don't got no electricity. Oh, my goodness. You are using your own resources. You know, these guys um, over in Africa, they are very kind. They are very kind. They are very, very kind to their president. They are very kind in the manner in which they are giving this coup because they are not really um, killing anyone. They have not killed any president. They just tell them to get out. Um, I can be a little bit um, cynic, dialed a little bit, criminal. Um, for me, in the country of Haiti, there is, in my opinion, no such thing as giving any pass to any of these guys who have been sitting in governmental position. To me, the politics of Kupetet, Bulekai, 
is very ça tient toujours pour moi because i believe that you how can you not be in the interest of the people of your country how can you look at see for 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 presidents to deal with other government and keep their people in such suffering there is a degree of hatred that you have for your own people which is very prevalent in the country of Haiti i mean we're not going to turn this into something else but if we had to go into the social issues of Haiti if we've touched on that it's major what's going on right now in Haiti it's done because people don't care about the haitians none of these eat these diarrhea they care about the haitian no matter who you are i don't give a damn if you happen to have an ancestry of haiti any haitian is a brother to you and today when i look at countries in the burkina faso niger mali and everywhere in africa to tell you the truth i look at myself and you guys as well because all of us we are finding the same fight against people who do not want us to have freedom true freedom because we are black because we have this type of hair I'm trying to let my afro grow. <laughs> I'm really liking it. They don't like us. You know, I I'm not racist. I have a lot of white friends. And there are a lot of people that are white that are just not racist. So it's really not a racist thing. It's really um a matter of politics a matter of um greed there you go greed because for friends to be using some of these countries in Africa for such lengthy time they have to have with them government in Africa that comply with what the bullshit that they are doing just like here in Haiti with Haiti and the United States. The United States is easy for them to do whatever they want in Haiti because they know they can buy these guys. Their politics is very different. See the United States they deal with money. That's the the politics of the United States and we're going to touch on Donald Trump. Because you guys know I'm going to bring you the truth. I'm going to bring you things from different perspective. I'm going to ask you to look at things differently. See the United States has a politics of money, money talk. They know that what's the price? how much or oh, i can buy daisy how much they'll keep putting the money in such a way that if you don't have any integrity if you don't have any strength you're going to succumb that's the us because at the end of the day even if they give you the money guess what they're going to turn around and they're going to take that money back but these Haitians they're dumb they never understand that i mean we saw what happened they give you the money everything that you see that is um happening here in Haiti is so you know it's funded it's funded it's funded by the DR it's funded by the US government it's funded by the people over in France you know it's probably funded by some of the countries in Africa because it's money it's money it's all about money you know these kids we talk about that where do they get their guns a lot of these kids you should see them they are so skinny their hair is red meaning that they are not eating properly they're not getting the proper nutrition. It's a job for them. They don't even know how to shoot. They just tell, give them guns and tell them a lot of them are barefoot on these streets. They don't even have the proper gear <laughs> to hold their guns. There are kids who have been left out for themselves and the United States, they the people in Haiti military, they are just using them up. Using them up and it's funny that these things are happening in Africa and I believe in the beginning of the year I think it must have been in February because I started to come online in February or so 
there was um, a page here that had, you know, things that were going on in Haiti. And I was reading some of the comment section and this one guy asked, he wanted, a, a, maybe he was African American. He wanted to know if what was going on here in Haiti had a similarity to what was going on over in Wanda. See, what I should have done as soon as he said that was to research Wanda and to research the issues because a lot of these people are trying to figure out, okay, you know, how come Haiti is a terrorist for Haiti? Because in the Burkina Faso, Niger, that's, that's their fight. They're fighting a lot of these terrorism. But a lot of these terrorists that these guys are fighting are also probably funded by friends. They also probably, you know, it, it's the same, it's the same game that they play. This is why it's so important for us over here in IT to understand what's going on over there for you to wake up and smell the coffee and realize that it's a game that they are running circle around us. They are playing a game and running circle around us in order to get us to be like this and to use up all resources. As I said to you before, ask me again, where this madness came from in Haiti. Total, complete chaos, complete madness with a level of killing that is unbearable. And today, what do you have? You have what they want, which is, okay, how much can we take? Because we are now going to send military force on the soil of Haiti. Hopefully you guys were able to catch the two videos that I posted regarding Kenya's involvement in IT. Monsieur Ruto, who says that he wants to come and give support to IT. Meanwhile, Monsieur Ruto is looking for money to pay off Kenya's debt. It's all money, guys. I mean, I'm not going to be doing this forever. I've told you before. A lot of times when you want to understand what, how things are going, you got to understand what's behind it. And 9.9 .9 times it's money. 9.9 .9 times it's money. Um, the president of Haiti has been, um, murdered since July 7, 2021. Monsieur Wuto, before that, I believe it was Monsieur Uhu Kenyatta, who was the president of Kenya. Where were you guys? Ah. Where were you guys? As soon as the president of Haiti was murdered, where were you guys? I've always said so to you. We talk about this. I've told you so. I've told you that the president of IIT died and not one head of state asked to support the country. Not one head of state came and said, can we send force? Can we send army personnel? Can we send something for you? IT was left out for dead. So now we are in 2023. Yes, the situation is pretty tough. For us last year, it wasn't so tough. So Kenya all of a sudden wants to send their troops to us. What are you, what do you want? Money. It's a deal. Let's not forget, as I said to you, they are in the quest of money. They have a lot of debt. Kenya has a lot of debt. Listen, Kenya has not paid their, their, their people. You can research this shit when I'm done. It's all factual. They have not paid their own employees. The government couldn't pay the employees. They all approximately 70 billion euros and they are not receiving any support because of the war in Ukraine. The United States is not, is not able to give them money. The European Union is not even to give them money. And there, the new government is saying, no, no, 
No, we are going to pay our debt. We are going to pay our debt. We don't know you. We, we don't know yet how, but we are going to pay our debt. So c'est sous do Haiti au bras d'une pays d'être ça. Monsieur, vous te faites ou vous en avez dit? Marcher sous treize ou pour pas piler quatorze. Sous tes ça. Marcher sous treize ou pour pas piler quatorze. Faire ou Anyways, woof. When I tell you that doing this work can take you to a whole other space, I'm telling you, these people do not understand that they are playing with fire. Okay. So now let's turn a little bit because we're doing global politics. We're going to touch on everything. I told you what went, what is going on over there and the, um, in these countries, you guys need to follow and understand what's going on in these countries. It's the same thing that is going on for us here in IET with the difference that I'm going to be really honest. First of all, you guys know that we don't have any military in IET. Like I've seen a couple of discussions. We only have the police force. It's very weakened extremely wicked the police officers do not have any first of all to go to war you need i've always tell you that your mental has got to be the number one thing if you do not have the mental capacity for war then you should not get involved in war and our guys here don't have that to tell you the truth the kids that are part of these gang members have much more of a strong mentality than the Haitian police. Because what? They know why they are fighting. These are kids or young adults that have been left out for themselves. What is fluel them is what? It's anger. It's anger. Anger toward the government. Anger toward these fake elites. Anger toward the police. And yes, I've always told you that other people are infiltrated in their mind. Other BS. They are infiltrating other BS in their mind. They're probably telling them shit like, oh, look at you. You can even eat in this country. These people treat you, you know, mind game shit. It's easy if you want to play games with kids. You got, you, you know, they, they're getting in their mind. The very first thing, this is why I told you that the police here in Haiti fell its job. Because the very first thing would have been to nip it at the bud. But of course, these guys, even in the police, they are very corrupt. They don't give a fuck. A lot of them are getting paid sideways. So the situation in Haiti... It's like, where exactly does did this madness came from? But we've analyzed this before. So you have to understand the politics behind everything for you to understand what's going on in Haiti now. Because I'm so over, I am so over people who truly believe that it's I, the Haitians. No, it is the it. The diarrhea that holds part, certain position and this non-operational government always been fueled by the United States of America, major gangsters. Yes, the USA, the fucking Dominican Republic, their government, and on it, you have to see the money flow. Money flow. Why do I say that? the government these governments are in on it i just look at things for what they are it's just a given i just put my puzzle together where are all the haitians going in the dr i've said this to you before i have so many people that i know people my age people my generation so five years younger five years older all of these people like i said to you before a lot of our generation are where they are in the united states but guess what even when they are in the United States to make money, a lot of them are looking at it like, but this is not where we are going to um, live our lives. A lot of them are looking at it like, hey, you know what? This is not really where we are going to um, live our lives. 
I'm looking at the notes that I have. I have so much that I want to talk to you about. But the video that's going to come out is going to be excellent. So they make big investment over in the DR. Because you have to remember that the politics for Haiti is a fear mongerous politic that I can't even tell you guys that things are not, it's not happening. I can't lie and say that thing, it's not happening. So you have 90% of the Haitian diaspora that are not really investing in their country. They're not investing in the country because they are afraid. They are afraid based on all of the news that you guys are watching. And to be very honest, I mean, since 2021, this country has been hell. 2024 is going to be another, it's, it's going to be another one, but 2024 is going to be all over the world. Watch what I say to you. 2024, it's a game changer. It's going to be a year filled with violence. It's not going to be one of the easiest year, but whoever did their preparation in these last, last two years, Whoever did not bullshit, whoever understood that the times were changing, you're going to start seeing major result in 2024. Major result. You're going to continue here in Haiti. It's going to be a lot of death. In the United States, your country is probably going to go through a lot because look at what these guys are going and are doing over in Donald Trump. indict him I, I i wasn't really paying attention but i think they took him and um they did a mug shot this is all for them to first of all mock him this is also for them to terrorize him in a way this is also a way to spread a lot of fear to his partisan so that they can believe that he's not going to go um, into elections, that he's not going to be able to go into elections. I saw a um, thing where he was talking, and then this one um, journalist asked him, well, Mr. President, are you going to be, are you going to pardon yourself, right? So there are, they are really trying to push this agenda that Trump is not going to be able to go into the election, which they are really wanted. I've told you that in the past, and I know that Donald Trump knew that because I, I listened to um, his first speech. I know that he knows that um, it's, hopefully he does. I'm pretty sure that he, he knows that. See, this, this is not, this, this politics shit, this is not a game that you want to get into if you don't know it. Because the level of taking out that is going to be, it's going to be a no bueno. And to tell you the truth, these are years where you definitely need a degree, a, 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 a little bit of a criminality in, in front of you. Because it's either you go or the next person go. And what is it going to be? Because you guys understand that some of us are not are not going to die. So that is what they are doing over to the um, U.S. And why are they doing this? What, what's the vendetta? You would ask me. So what's the vendetta against Donald Trump? Why is it that they they don't want him there? Because Trump doesn't have their politics. I'm talking about the United States government. Donald Trump, that, and I've touched on it before, Donald Trump doesn't have the politics that the U.S. government has had in the last fucking, what, 40 plus years of invading other countries. So what France is doing in Africa, the United States is also doing this in the Americas, supporting, you know, dictators, overthrowing government, you know, they have all these entities to support us. They have USAID. They have a bunch of bullshit here, you know, in the Americas. They, they, they have it everywhere because they, they just want to portray that they are supporting us. They are helping us. Meanwhile, they are crippling us. They are having their foot on their neck. I mean, listen, the list goes on and on. And what does it cost the United States to do this? It costs them money. You know, I, I, the USA is not a rich country. It's really not. It's a country that is in debt. 
Their money is not even the, the highest money anymore. And now you got bricks. Guys. <sighs> if there is anything that you should be doing, for those of you who are watching me, is to freaking vote for Donald Trump in 2024. I mean, hopefully I'll be able to vote. You have got to vote for him. Because the politics of the United States is, to, they, they have a politics where, you know, it's all ego. It's all about, you know, wanting to have the monopoly and the shift that's going on. China is definitely moving ahead. You know, the Chinese government is very smart. They are extremely patient and extremely strategic. This, these are the two things that you need to have in this life because, you know, it's still very much shake like it, 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 when I look at the fact that I've been living in IT for five years straight, it, it, it like, this is my, I guess, maturity because in the past I've never done that. But I think it's because I understood, especially entering 2021, especially after the assassination of the Haitian president, especially after that assassination, I knew that the shift had begun and I knew that I had to choose where I was going to stay and I chose Haiti, right? So the Chinese government is very, very patient. It took them years and years and years and years to build on. But what did they build on? They built on their military. They built on their military and they built a lot on their strategic move on developing partnership globally. They have the BLT, the Belt Road Initiative Program, doing routes, thinking strategically. Be like, okay. So by the time the USA was catching up, China was already moving forward. They launched the BL, the Belt Road Initiative Program. They launched it in 2015. I, I wasn't even aware of that. And around that time, I was making videos and saying that China should align itself with Russia and, and um, fucking Cuba. Excuse the French. China and Cuba. That's what I was saying. Because I've always known that it, 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 what's, what's the purpose to um, be in any type of alliance with the USA? However, I really believe in the candidacy of Donald Trump because he doesn't have that politics. You have to remember that Donald Trump is more a businessman. So he doesn't really give a fuck about other countries. What he gives a damn about is what kind of money move are we making in the United States? What kind of money? See, people like Donald Trump, these are people, you, you know, let me tell you what my dad used to do when we were kids. So when we were kids, a lot of time when we were eating at the dinner, we always had a little food that it's left on, on the plate. So maybe, you know, a piece of meat, maybe a little bit of rice. Like we never finish everything. And that was the one thing that he went around or played and grabbed everything and he ate it because he said nothing should be wasted. You should not be wasting. See, these are people who understand the value of money because they had to work to get to where they are at. They understand that. Why are you wasting this? People like, well, no longer myself, but you know, people who grow up in ease and people who always have never really to fight for a certain thing too hard, we tend to not give a lot of value to certain things. But Donald Trump, he's looking at all the freaking money that is going away from the country. And he's looking at how the, the United States is trash. It's trash. I always... I don't even have um, a, I, I don't talk to my younger sister all the time. She lives in the state of New York City and I just cannot be sitting there and uh, entertaining her because she's always trying to tell me about how the trains are dirty, about how the people are sleeping on the train, about how the homeless and all of these things that I know too well. I live in Massachusetts. All you have to do is go down Truman Street and Park Street by the pond. You go down Harvard Square by the pond. Homeless people and freaking Los Angeles. Homeless people. Look at the trash in LaGuardia. 
This is what Donald Trump, he doesn't want that shit. He's looking at freaking Dubai. He's looking at, you know, all these countries over there. Look at how much money Beyonce got paid to go play in Dubai. Dubai is the new it. He knows that. He knows what he's talking about. And he said it in an, an interview. I don't know what's the vendetta against the man. If the people of the United States want for the USA to have a seat at the table in this new world order, Trump is your guy. That's it. Trump is your guy. He is the only guy that makes sense. He is a businessman. He understands the game. He is a strategist. Listen, this, don't get me started with Joe Biden. I'm not going to talk about him. I'm just not. And that woman, the vice president, I just cannot. I will not be able to sleep tonight. Excuse me. I'm not going to talk about Joe Biden. I don't, I'm not going to talk about him. I'm not. Because at this point, I don't know. So, we understand the vendetta that these people have against Donald Trump. They just don't want the man there because the man doesn't have the policy that they have. He's not like, what's their fucking policy anyway? They just want to be bullies. Europe is crumbling. Like freaking look at freaking France. Italy is turning against France. The prime minister of Italy. Oh, I have this. I was going to talk to you about the CIDO, but let's turn around and look at what the prime minister of um, Italy is saying because France criticized them. Right? France went and, you know, fucking Mark won't criticize them, talking about that they were disgusting, blah, 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 blah. So they went in, and the prime minister, her name is, she's a woman, her name is Madame Georgia Milani. She openly criticized the French president, Monsieur Emmanuel Macron, on February 10, 2023, his decisions of inviting the Ukrainian leader to a summit that was held in Paris. Now, you understand that currently Russia is having a war in Ukraine. And it's all politics. You know, these guys, these people are looking at it like, listen, Russia still has a lot of strength. You know, Russia is really not one of the countries that people want to go, you know, at war with like that. And here you have freaking Mr. Macron, who wants to define the Russians. And he is inviting Monsieur, what is his name? Monsieur Volodymyr Zelensky. So he is the Ukrainian president. He got invited into a um, summit, right? So... Let's see. During this meeting, Madame Georgia Milani states, quote, the irresponsibles, because, you know, Emmanuel Macron had criticized them of being very irresponsibles over in Italy. So she says, the irresponsibles are those who bombed Libya because they were concerned that Italy would obtain important energy concessions with Gaddafi and left that facing the chaos of illegal immigration we are facing now. Disgusting is France that continues to exploit Africa by printing money to 14 African countries while charging them met fees. And by children labor in the mines and by extract of raw materials, as is happening in the Niger, when where friends extract 30% of uranium it needs to run its nuclear reactors, while 90% of Niger population lives without electricity, the solution is not to transfer Africans to Europe but to liberate Africa from some Europeans. Madame Georgia Milani continues to point out the apparent poverty over in Burkina Faso, where the extraction of gold is being exploited by children to finish where and the reserve of no other than the country of France. Further elaborates how France print the money of Burkina Faso while they have one of the richest resources of gold. If this is not a mockery, 
I don't know what is, but I've always said to you guys, it's simple. It's really basic. I've said this to you even at an individual level. When you don't know the value that you bring, people are going to run a game. And this is what has been going on in these countries. Now, remember what happened to Gaddafi over in the Libya. It was under the government of Mr. Barack Obama that the United States went over there and took him out on the false pretense that he was a dictator, that he was killing his people. Now, listen, we've already touched on this. Supposedly, democracy doesn't work for everyone. And what has their democracy done in the country of Haiti? The only president that Haiti had who was democratically elected by the population of Haiti was Jean-Bertrand Aristide. That they took out twice. So who's the bad guy? Guys, it's simple. That's their politics. Whether it is the France, whether it is the United States, it's their politics to keep us at bay. So now you have the prime minister over in Italy who's saying, hey, listen, France, Macron, we have enough of you. You were an accomplice with the USA to kill Gaddafi because you were afraid that Italy was going to receive more contract with Libya for resources. Guys, this is fascinating. Hopefully you guys get to, you know, do a lot of research and understand what is going on globally. So now France is really... I know my coins probably not sleeping at night. If he cares, so he probably doesn't give a damn. These guys, they never give a damn, right? But I'm pretty sure he has a lot to think about these days, especially with the last square in the Niger, and you got the prime minister of Italy. Because one thing that you have to understand is that the European Union is looking at it like, hey, listen, you are not going to bring us and drag us into a war in Africa. We're not going to do that. Because they have said they've been saying that from the notes that i've read that you know they were going to invade the niger that's france you know from the last coup d'etat which happened a month ago they they're saying that oh if mr president bazoom doesn't get back we are going to uh, get into war but you you just cannot do that and what you have the irony of the situation is that remember what i've said to you over at the burkina faso the young captain was invited into a discussion with the Russian president, Mr. Vladimir Putin. I take my hats off to you as well. And, um, and the meeting, you know, he alluded, you know, so Captain Traoré alluded that, hey, you know, our brothers over in the Niger are also going through it. They've just recently overthrew. So, so this is the solidarity, the brotherhood solidarity. And this is why I'm bringing this to the forefront because we need to know what's going on. Because even when I'm looking at it, like this is why the United States is such a interesting country because, you know, you guys have so many black people over there who claims, you know, when I made the video about the fact that blacks in America were black Americans and they're not African Americans, so many people are ready to tear me apart. But how many of you are even aware of these countries in Africa and are voicing your opinion or are standing up for something? We who are right here in the Americas, how many supports are we getting from black Americans? None. Listen, you guys have enough. I know that. There's, a, there's enough problem going on with black people in the United States. I know that. But this is just to tell you that there needs to be a shift in the mentality of what we're talking about because... If we can all unite and have one force, now I'm talking about it's people versus um, puppet government. People versus puppet government. This is where we have to unite ourselves. We have to unite ourselves. We have to say no. Those of you, some of you people, kids that are living over in the United States, you can never come to countries that hate you to live. They've played, they've run such a game on you. 
such a game on you. So as I was saying to you before, so, um, you know, um, Macron, I don't know what he was smoking, was saying things like, oh, you know, we're going over there. We're going to invade the Niger because we want Mr. Bazoum to be back in power. He was democratically elected by the people. Meanwhile, the people are out on the streets and are claiming and are saying, hurrah, we do not want friends anymore. We do not want the soldiers of friends. So the European Union and other countries are looking at it like, listen, Macron, we are not trying to go into a war. If you and your country want to go invade the Niger, you are on your own. And on the other hand, this is where I told you that the devil is a liar. Good with all, will always prevail in life. Bid our time. Yes, they've been at it for a long time, but the time has come. As some of the countries in Europe are telling um, Mr. Macron that, hey, you know, we, 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 listen, we don't want to have anything to do with, what, what, what do you have? Matter of fact, the prime minister of Italy is putting the shit out. They're, they're even going further and say, no, no, hey, listen, you guys were in on um, the, the death of Gaddafi. Yeah. Yeah, Macron, you are in. You and your country are in on it because you didn't want Italy to have any part of any deal with Libya, right? Oh, Macron, you are taking 30% of uranium over in the Niger and their population has 90% of no electricity. You are printing out, friends. We are in 2023. Macron, your country is printing money for 14 countries in Africa. And you charge them for that. And you calling us disgusting? Hi. So even if we go back into history, do you see why the French will never like any Haitian people? They're never going to like you because even today in 2023, you have friends who still tries to colonize countries in Africa. And meanwhile, they had Haiti at their beck and call and we took them out. We're like, get the fuck out. We don't want you there. That was 200 plus years ago, 1804, 2023. Haiti should have been a top country in the globe. Haiti should have been the country to teach all African people, or not even African, all countries where they felt like oppressive. Haiti should have been that leadership. But today, look at the state of IT. And they use it, honey. They use it against us. Oh, baby, they use it. Because what is the very first thing? It's the mindset. The very first thing is always the mindset. And they've instilled through the freaking madness that's been going on in Haiti, they've instilled a lot of fear into the on Haitian. I mean, listen, you know my story, so I'm not going to sit there and tell you all these things. You know. They've instilled fear. How many I see are really here in Haiti? Right now, if I took a poll, that's the sad thing. If I took a poll about how many Haitians want an international force on the Haitian soil, I'm very, very, very certain that the majority would go toward having a force here on the soil. And for me, it's a no. Because it's their own tactics. Yes, our kids are, you know, they're going through it. The population in general is going through it because... You know, I didn't go into detail about what went down in Haiti. Like I said to you before, it's very important for me to keep my mindset stable. Because if my mind is not stable, then I cannot do my work. 
So a lot of times I, I tap out. So I may just be in this country, but I'm tapping out. So I, I'm just not, my body's here, but I'm, I'm not here. The beginning year, this entire year was filled with violence for us. And next year is going to be even worse. That's what they want. You know, I've always known that. And you do not have any leadership to connect the dots. There is no trust among Haitian people. There is no brotherhood. Where was the police? Even between, there is nothing in IT. This is why I say that it's a fascinating movement and I applaud my comrades over in the Niger, in the Burkina Faso, in the Mali, and the other ones who are going to wake up and do it. But for me here in Haiti, I know that things are not easy like this because the mindset of the people of IT is very different. It's very, very different. You need a complete eradication of these individuals here on our soil, all of them. They need to not be ousted because they get ousted, then they come back. They need to be gone from this earth. They need to be gone. They need to go join Satan. That's what they need to do because they are filled with greed. They don't care. As we know everything that happened. It's contract kills on contract kills here in Haiti. It's it, man. You do not know this game of politics in, in here in Haiti. So anybody at the moment, I wouldn't recommend for the people, the young people, the youth, the guys that are outside, we need to figure out who is manipulating them. These are our guys. Yeah, the kids that they are saying that are gang members. Now, these are the kids that we need to empower because they have, they are, for them, what they are doing is justify. They are justifying their actions. They are justifying their action based on the fact that they go weeks with nothing to eat. No matter what they do, there are no jobs in this country or there are jobs, but it's not out in the public. They know that they are against people who hate them. People who don't want them to be anything. So for them, seeing a police officer, seeing anyone who represents the Haitian government is seeing blood red, is seeing death. They look and they see the the there are, there are um, three powerful emotions that run through the vein because guess what what can make you kill another man love at by all means necessary you're gonna protect your family so if the life of your kids your spouse your brother or your sister, mainly your family, is in danger, reflects automatically you going to kill that person. You don't care that you are at odds with your mom. You don't care that you are at odds with your child. If anybody is stepping in front of your kid, you are ready to kill. So love is a powerful emotion. Love make you do things that you wouldn't do, right? A lot of us, we what make you do certain things for someone is love. It's because I love you. How many people usually wait for me to come? It's love. What is the second other emotion? It's hate. Same shit. Love and hate. Same coin, different, different face. Hate will fuel you. When you nourish enough hate, you snap. How many murder cases that we know happens? Wow, I would have never imagined that. Well, that person just snap. They hate you. There are seated hatred. Seated hatred is a hatred that from a friend, from someone who pretends that they like you, that they love you, but they don't. They hate you. A lot of times, these hatred, you know, people do strategic things, just like the United States hates Haiti. 
They've always hated Haiti. But their hatred is different because they are using you. They are pretending that they want, you know, but it's all a mockery. And what is the third emotions? It's fear. Fear will make you react quickly, but react in a very different type of way. Fear, right? So you have to be careful with those emotions. With the population in Haiti, you have two things. The kids that are now a part of this freaking madness of gangs, what's driving them away is hatred and fear. Hatred for the people who have put them in the situation that they are. Because a lot of them know that they were raised. A lot of them understand that the actions that they are doing is blatantly criminal. And then you have fear. Because now they've, that they have engaged in these criminal actions, they know that there is no way out for them. So fear is driving them to do it. Fear. Fear. One time I was out in the woods and I was over in Massachusetts and where I go for my walks, there are a lot of snakes, but I'm not someone who used to be around snakes like that. So I didn't know the reflex of a snake, right? Usually for the most part, unless it's a very venting snake, like a snake that is out there to kill you, snakes for the most part are just about their day. You know, they're not going to bother you if you do not bother them. But a, a snake that is getting ready to attack based on fear, put its neck up, right? So here I am going for my walk and I'm coming from the wood, but I'm just walking and I'm enjoying, you know, it's all wood and something tells me stop and I stop and I see a freaking snake right on the opposite side. The snake has its head up and its neck out ready to attack. So it's like the both of us are just stuck. I'm stuck looking at it and the snake is stuck looking at me trying to pretend the both of us are what's going on. It's reflex and fear. The snake is afraid of my reaction and I'm afraid of their reaction. So what I did was just stay as calm as possible, not move, just relaxed until its head went down, its neck went down. And he, he just went back inside about its day. I waited a good amount of time before I continued my walk. But I knew the reflex of the snake because I had been going in that particular area and I was aware that I, there was a lot of snakes. So I did a little bit of a research to figure out, okay, what kind of snakes, you know, what should I do when I see a snake and things like that. And my aunt had also told me, usually snakes are not going to bother you if you do not bother them. And she always told me, you are going in their habitat. She said, you, you love to go out in this wood, but you have to understand that this is, um, their habitat. So you're going to run into not only the snakes, but other animals. So you have to be careful with that which is also very important. So what is going on for us here in Haiti is fear. These kids are very fearful for their lives. Hatred, but now it's also fear. It's realizing that, okay, now they're really out to get us. When, when you think about, so now we're all over the place, but you know, there's so much to talk about. But even now, when you think about the movement that Haiti had, the Boakali movement, right? And I've never talked about that because like I said to you before, I'm against all of this madness. I'm against these kids that are now in the game. I'm so against these police officers that are, you know, raging war on them. I'm against the population who had decided to do the Boakali because this is all a tactics. It's like people putting us one against one and there is no one who has the decency to understand that they are running a game on you. So who's dying? It's the Haitian people who are dying. 
whether you are part of the gang, whether you are part of the population, whether you are part of the police, we are still Haitian people. We are the ones that are dying. You need to figure out what is at the root of your problem. Where are these gang coming from? Who is behind them? Who is giving them the money? That should have been the primary thing that the police should have done. So now you have a population that is what? Fearful. So the population is fearful. They look at the police like, ha, huh, okay. These guys are not doing anything. They are incompetent. They cannot support us. They're kidnapping us. They're killing us. So we have to do, we have to support ourselves. We can't let these kids kill us. So they decided to do the Boakale movement. For those of you who do not know what it was, it's a movement that the population of Haiti, because, you know, they were definitely getting um, treated by these kids who are part of these gangs who are getting infiltrated with ideas, um, killing population, walking around, telling people to get out of, you know, like just complete madness. So the population started to kill back, fight back. And they use machete and they're like, we don't give a damn. If we even have it, one inclination that you guys were a part of it, you're done. So they did this for a period of time where they were killing these kids and they were burning them. Guys, this is a very criminal act. No, I could never be okay with that. That is not a solution. That is not a solution. This is all a tactics for people to invade your soil. Leadership, leadership is about what? Being able to have strategic, being able to control, being able to serve a problem, being able to um, stay and say things like, no, that's true leadership. True leadership is not saying that I'm okay with the population. I understand the frustration of, I mean, I've lived all this madness. And there are things that maybe one day I will be able to share with you because unfortunately, very, very sadly for me, I've experienced other things through whatever was going on here in this country. But I know, I know that it's not, it, it, the problem is not the police. It's the puppet people that are governing. Bunch of trash, trash can, trash can. So if the movement has got to be done in Haiti, it's not gonna come from, it's not gonna come from the government of Haiti. It's not going to come from any opposing party here in Haiti. They're all, it's not like you guys over at the Burkina Faso and the Niger. No, these guys, they're, they're, ils ne pèsent pas la balance pour nous en Haïti. Ils ne veulent pas la balance. Ce sont tous les mêmes, les mêmes gens pour nous en Haïti. Ils ne pèsent pas la balance. They have to be eradicated, in my opinion, all of them. Opposing party, like I said to you before, um, a couple of people have asked me to talk about the government of Haiti. It's really not any interest of me. You guys are not going to find anything interesting about them. They're, they're, they're incompetent. They're extremely, I mean, look at the state of their country. They, 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 they oh, I don't even want to talk about them. I don't even want to talk about them. Whew. So, um, let me finish. Now, I, I have to tell you this much. So let's go back now to the um, over in the Niger. So um, in Africa, there is um, a, what do you call this thing? It's, it's basically in a, a group of association, right? It is called CDAO. So CDAO is the acronym in French. 
and it stands for Communauté Économique des États de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. So basically, CDAO is kind of like this, they, they similarly are like, would be just like the OAS, which is Organization of American State. And them, they are a group of countries over in West Africa that are supposedly there to support the economy of their country. So what are the countries that are a part of the um, CDAO? Let's read. We have the Bene, we have the Burkina Faso, Cape Verdean, we have La Côte d'Ivoire, we have Gam um, Gambia, we have the Ghana, we have the Guinea, we have Guinea-Bissau, we have Liberia, we have the Mali, we have the Niger, we have Nigeria, the Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Togo. So I believe that it's 15 countries that are a part of this, um, you know, this... Um, you know, community, right? So out of this country, you have three countries. So you have the Mali, you have the Burkina Faso, and you have the Niger. Three out of these 15 countries, three of their countries or have given um, a coup d'etat. So the remaining countries, some of them, are really vexed, if you would. So they are very vexed about this coup d'etat and they are, they are right now, they're just talking to tell you the truth because I've spent my entire week and my entire weekend paying attention to what they are saying, what other government are saying. They've been saying that they are going to invade the Niger. They've been saying that they are going to get into war with the Niger. They gave in the um, general a deadline to re-put Monsieur Bazoum in power, a bunch of talks. Um, now, why is it that it's so important for us to understand? Because it's the same bullshit as OAS, um, CARICOM, good for nothing association that are going to get dismantled today i was probably going to get dismantled it's not going to be a part of the new world order because people are seeing that i mean anybody who is have a sense of decency because how is it that you have three countries first of all their name stands for Communauté Économique des États de l'Afrique de l'Ouest CDAO Communauté Économique so why is it that your economy is i mean Ouh, on n'est qu'à faire politique là, les, en Afrique tout, eh? C'est pas possible, hein? C'est du jamais vu avec ces gens. Du jamais vu avec ces gens. Jamais vu. Ah, disgusting. Disgusting. So, you are the community, economic community of West Africa. And you are opposed to this coup over at the Burkina Faso, the Niger, and the Mali, you should be applauding this guy because they are in favor of their countries. And I hope that the remaining people of these 15 other countries, 12 countries, that they wake up and smell the coffee and start giving coup d'etat after coup d'etat. That's what you guys deserve. This is impossible. So you are saying that you are ready to invade the freaking Niger? Well, it's all talks, ladies and gentlemen. They've been saying it like for the last weeks. Of course, they cannot do so because it's like, what? So let's read a little bit about their role. This is all garbage. Garbage. When I tell you, garbage. Unbelievable. So we're going to go a little bit about the role of the city owl. Their role is to protect the each. Remember. What is CDAO? It is the community, the economic community of West African countries. How many countries are part of the CDAO? 15 countries. What are they? Benin, the Burkina Faso, Liberia, Cape Verdean, Cote d'Ivoire, Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Togo. So these are the countries. So now let's look at what they are standing for part of this supposedly economic community. Their role is to protect the economic interests of their respected countries. 
they signed a treaty on May 28, 1975 in Lagos, Nigeria. ECOWAS was created, which is their economy, whatever they have going on, with the aim of promoting the ideal of collective self-sufficiency among its member states. As an economic union, it aims to create a single large trading block through economic cooperation. The integrated economic activities revolve around industry, transport, telecommunication, energy, agriculture, natural resources, trade, monetary, and financial issues. Where is the headquarter? It's over in Abuja, Nigeria. Their objective to promote cooperation and integration with a view to an economic union of West Africa, a view to raising the standard of living, oh, Jesus, a view to raising the standard of living of its people, maintaining and increasing economic stability, strengthen relations between member states and contribute to the progress and development of the African continent. Some fundamental principles for CIDO, CDO. Equality and interdependence of member states, solidarity and collective self-sufficiency, non-aggressive between member states, peaceful settlement of dispute between member states, respect, promotion, and protection of human, human and people's rights. So, I mean... I don't have to go further to um, tell you that they are basically going against everything that they stand for. This is all notes that I gathered. I'm not finished. I told you I've been, you, I'll put a video out. This is Sidi I'm so tired of this people. So Sidi stands for Economy Community of African West Africa. They, so you stand for economy, you are supposed to protect your people, you are supposed to uphold the life of your people, meanwhile, none of this shit is being done, you got these guys in the Burkina Faso who's standing up, you got these guys over in the Niger who's standing up, Mali has stood up, and you people are trying to say that, uh-uh, no, we're gonna have to invade the Niger, whose interests are you supporting, huh, you supporting the interests of the member state, no, you're not. You're supporting your own interests. You're supporting the interests of France. These people over in Africa are very, very soft because, um, you know, where I'm from, we take care of business. We do. We take care of business. That's the one thing about IT. We still take care of business. So for you guys to be doing these things to your people. Hi. A damn shame. A damn shame. They have endless meeting. Please follow the channel of Natalie Yam, N-A-T-A-L-I-E, and then Yam, Y-A-M-B, and then Zach Mwekasa. Zach, Z-A-C-K, Mwekasa. How do you spell your name, Zach? I had it written down for you. M-W-E-K-A-S-A-S-S-A. -S 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 Zach is unbelievable. But both of, the, or, or, of their channel is actually in French. I have been just, just watching their channel since last week. <laughs> And I just couldn't believe my eyes. Well, this is it. Um, you know, I just had to come because I do understand that a lot of you guys may not know what's going on in Africa. And um, it's very important for us to, This is these are the events of the world. This is a changing world. And also, as I um, come here and talk to you, 
I do know that there was a wave of violence over the weekend. Somebody told me that. Um, it looks like there appears to have been a lot of shootouts going on in the cities of Miami as well as in Boston. There were a few shootouts. Seven people died. I mean, it's going to get worse and worse because let me tell you something about the law of the universe. Let me just finish on this note. Everything that you do in this life is going to come back for you. I've experienced that. Good or bad. Life is a mirror image. One thing that I understood about the mass shooting that the United States randomly has. It's one of the only countries right here in the Americas with such a number of mass shooting in schools everywhere. And you know why the United States has such depth? It's because of the work of their government. It's everything that they are involved with in countries like Libya, in countries like Haiti, in countries in the Americas and Venezuela, for every one of our children who are dead, for every chaos that Haiti is going through, Venezuela is going through, countries in Africa that they are involved with, whether it's by selling guns, whether it is by infiltrating all type of diseases, infiltrated all type of strategic mindset. This is why you have this mass shootout in the United States, ladies and gentlemen. It has very little, very, very little to do with the fact that people in the United States have guns. No, people everywhere have guns. What triggers an individual to go to school and start shooting is the law of nature as above. Because we're not going to turn this into, you know, there is a God. There is a God. Everything. My dad used to tell me that all the time. He used to tell me that hell is right here. He said, you will reap what you sow. Everything that you do is going to come back one way or another, good or bad. If you do good, you will see it. If you do bad, you will see it one way or the other I know people who have not paid for things that they've done, but when I look at the life of their kids, I understand. So I'm very sorry <sighs> because when you hear death, it's just, you know, people are inhuman. They don't, they don't care, but I do. But it's your government. They are nasty individuals. They don't care. They don't care about other people's lives. They don't care about other kids, other human beings. Ah, uh, my friends. There will come a time where I will meet with these individuals. And I will teach them a lesson that they will never forget for what IEC has been enduring since the assassination of the president of IET. Everyone understand this. You shall not fret, ladies and gentlemen. Every one who was involved with the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse, which catapults the country of Haiti into such madness, they will pay. Their children will pay. Their grandchildren will pay. They will see it. They will live it. 
they will remember that I've said so. You will pay for what you have done to this man. It was a direct threat to the people of our country. And you will pay. I know that. You will pay. You will pay for this gruesome assassination that you've done on the person, everyone. Everyone, I don't care who you are, every one of you, you will pay. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here with me. To my audience, I had a small audience, but the people stayed with me. I will see you sometime in September, um, uh, maybe mid September. Um, please do follow my TikTok over at Miss Daisy Love 83 over the few weeks I will be it's, it's a TikTok that I created for a little bit more of my creative side um yeah I'll, I'll have a, a a few videos um over there um you know a little bit political but more so creative um I also am I'm just really busy there's a lot going on and there's just a lot going on at the back end I do have an accelerator program that I should have been put out. Um, it's supposed to start, um, I'm shooting for the end of um, September. So I'm working on that. So um, I'm not really going to be online unless I have to, like today was very like impromptu. Sometimes, you know, I'm not planning to come on live, but there are certain events that I just feel like, hey, you know, I need to inform people about what's really going on. Um, so I will see you in September on, on, like I'm shooting for second week of September. So probably like around the eighth, the 10th or so I may see you do follow me on my social, my page. You guys already know that I have a YouTube page, DL Consulting Firm. This is where I'll be uploading some of these videos for you guys. I also have a YouTube page, Youth Agency International. I am going to be starting to work on this channel mid late September. This channel is going to be dedicated to a lot more cultural topics. So you really want to um, be a part of that. Um, and my other channel that I've had for quite a while, which is the Days of Love 83, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it just yet. So right now I'm just posting my shorts there. Um, and then, you know, if I have other things in the making, I will definitely update you. Thank you so much for being here with me. Um, and I will see you very soon. Have a good night. Thank you to the people who stayed with me, who listened to me. I really hope that you guys are really going to understand um, everything that I've talked about. It's very crucial that you understand the time of today. Very, very crucial. This is your world.